Red Wing, Minnesota on the mighty Mississippi River, the ultimate outdoor playground. Got him. Today, the best walleye anglers in the world are here to do battle with Old Man River and the monster walleyes that live here. This is the Walmart FLW Walleye Tour presented by Burke. Woo! Yes! Yes! The Northern Mississippi River is, right now, one of the hottest walleye fisheries in the country. And as a river system, it's one of those places where an angler can get healthy real quick. Here's Ranger Pro Brian Gorkman, and this is action from day three of the tournament. And that is what you can do on this river. One small spot loaded with big fish, and Bjorkman rocketed from near 60th place all the way into the top 10 with one of the heaviest limits of the tournament, over 31 pounds yesterday. This morning, however, there is some concern that things are gonna be a little tougher. A big cold front moved in overnight, and that could affect the bite. Last couple days have been inconsistent, but, you know, another day today, it's a new day, it's a river. We'll just go out and give her our best shot and see what she gives us today. But the fish normally in the river aren't affected by cold fronts nearly as much because you got the current. And I'm fishing actually in the lake, so. I guess we just have to go out and see you know, what happens. It's never easy, but these guys are the best in the business and will no doubt give us an incredible show in the second stop of the 2009 Walmart FLW Walleye Tour, presented by Berkeley. Hi everybody, I'm Jason Harper and welcome to Red Wing, Minnesota on the banks of the mighty Mississippi River. Here on the borders of Wisconsin and Minnesota, the Old Man, as it's known, is one of the best walleye fisheries in the country. And today, the 10 best river rats in the business square off head-to-head -head for a top prize of $100,000. And here are the names that have our attention this week. Some of them are getting to be pretty regular this season, including Perry Good in his second straight top 10, a red-hot Pat Bile who won our season opener on Lake Erie, and Ted Takasaki who finished second to Bile on Lake Erie and has a seven pound lead heading out on the final day here. I would say I'm just really grateful to be in this position, uh, to be able to fish for a living and uh, be in a position to win. I think that's the, uh, the real goal of any professional angler is to put themselves in a position to win and that's what I've done. The race is on for Mississippi River Walleyes, and this time it truly is a race, at least for two of our top 10 pros. Brian Bjorkman and Rick Zakowski have been fishing the same small hole all week, a place called Katrina's Cut, which is a small channel connecting two major sections of the north end of Lake Pepin. Big post-spawn walleyes use this small spot as a resting area as they move from the river to the main lake. The best location in this cut is only big enough, though, for one boat, and the first guy there gets it. God dang it, you got me at the last second. So Bjorkman gets the spot on the spot in Katrina's cut. The question is, will the fish be there today? This spot is not a spot that, that uh, 
It gives you a whole lot of opportunities. It just gives you quality fish. Southeastern Minnesota, along the border with Wisconsin, is where the FLW Walleye Tour makes its stop this week. We're fishing pools three, four, and five of the river, in all about 70 miles of water. But the bulk of the action this week has been centered on pool four and giant Lake Pepin. On the FLW Walleye Tour, the pros and co-anglers work as a team for a single five fish limit. There is no slot limit, but there is a no cold rule in effect, which means an angler has to decide whether to keep or release a fish immediately when they catch it. The teams are allowed to keep eight fish in their live well and weigh their best five. But once that eighth fish goes in, they're done for the day. So the question always is, if you catch a small fish early, do you keep it or roll the dice and throw it back in hopes of catching something bigger later on? Here's our leader, Ted Takasaki. My game plan for today is to troll up at least three to four 20 inch saugers. At this point, you can't fall before below 10th place. Uh, and I want to make sure that I have at least a few fish to have a base, and then I will start fishing my big fish spots. And I mean, I looked hard, long and hard at that one. I, that was right on the edge. I thought, well, I should probably keep anything that I catch today being cold front and probably tough conditions. 17 and a half. Right at the last minute, I said, this is the championship and uh, you got to go for everything and uh, decided to toss them. Now we're going for the win. Toss them. Okay. With a seven pound lead, Ted could easily play it safe, but he's going to be the final day riverboat gambler and go for broke. Now here's the guy you really got to keep an eye on. Ranger Pro Nick Johnson, who started the day in second, but is quite possibly the best Mississippi River walleye fisherman in the world today, a true river rat. My first fish come off on a point down the lake. We were three-way rigging it. It's windy, and uh, yeah, yeah, he'll keep. actually it's a really good spot. I haven't been pulling many minnows all week, and I, I put a minnow on just to try it. At that point, when I, you know, when I caught that first one, it was a 17 and a half, 18 inch fish, I knew it was going in the box. Well, it's a start, you know. Fat old 18 incher, get some water for him before he goes nuts. He was seven pounds down when we started. Now he's down by just four. One more solid bite for Johnson and this thing is all even. He gets a double. And we get a triple. Nope, got a double one. <laughs> FLW Outdoors is brought to you by Walmart, Save Money, Live Better, BP, Beyond Petroleum, National Guard, Tums Dual Action, Goes to Work in Seconds, Last All Day or All Night, Cannon, Leaders in Controlled Depth Fishing, and by Yamaha. Yamaha Outboards, reliability starts here. Back on the mighty Mississippi River, where the walleye chess match is already in full swing. Leader Ted Takasaki just put his first keeper in the boat and immediately let it go, gambling on the chance to catch a bigger keeper later. But while that was happening, Nick Johnson was closing the gap with a solid three pounder to start the day. Things can happen fast on a fishery like this with so many fish and so many different places to find them and ways to catch them. This fishery has always been outstanding. As, as long as I, you know, even when I was a kid, we could go and catch eight, nine, 10 pound fish in our backyard consistently. Both walleye and soggy populations are doing extremely fine. Even with a continuous open fishing season, we've actually seen increases in walleye abundance to about eight per net as compared to only two to three in the, in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Um, from what we've measured, the 2001 year class has, was an exceptional year class, and those fish are eight years old now. And what we've seen in our sampling is that they're about 25 inches long. That year was outstanding, and them fish are big. They grow very fast. Two-year-old fish here, 
a 15 incher. And they got a shad base forage, they got a lot to eat. It's, it's such a unique fishery compared to other large lakes. We're not a lake, we're really a river. Fish, fish are growing so fast and dying so young that the fishing pressure, even though it's high here, is not really a contributing factor and, and couldn't influence the entire population. The people now are so much more educated, the younger guys. It's not cool to keep a limit of five to eight pound fish anymore. You can probably get a black eye at the dock <laughs> if something like that happens. So it's, the, the education is, is amazing and, and to talk to people. The skill level has risen immensely, but the education and the catch and release also has to go with it. Our fishery is in really good shape. Nick Johnson is trying to use as many of his trusted spots as possible today. He's moved from the lake to the river. My second fish came on a place up in the river again that it's a pretty well known big fish spot. I don't know. Is it fighting? It's heavy. Well, that's good. <laughs> Keep reeling. Don't, don't let the drag. Is the drag set good? Yeah, okay. Here, all right. Keep reeling. It felt heavy anyway. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, it's a dinky sauger. I needed five. I only had one in the box. And I believe, uh, you know, that fish was pretty much a no brainer. We were happy to have it. <laughs> oh man, Chad, you're on the board with a 16 incher. Babe. A solid keeper sauger closes the gap on Takasaki by another pound and a half. I think I caught that one here the other day. I think it was the same one. I let him go. <laughs> Glad you did. And you might be wondering why a fish that isn't called a walleye is a keeper in a walleye tournament. The sauger, a very close cousin to the walleye, is a legal fish on the FLW walleye tour and is found almost exclusively in river systems. They are smaller on average than a walleye, maxing out at about six or seven pounds. And they also have much different coloration with mottled black sides, a spotted dorsal fin, and no signature white tip on the back fin. And while they are normally not big weight fish, once in a while you can find a monster like this one from Pat Bile on day three. Here's a new face in an FLW Walleye Tour top 10. Making his first career cut is Ranger Pro Barry Walker of Big Springs, Nebraska. He's trolling crankbaits on a sharp break in Lake Pepin. Go ahead and reel it in. Quick start for Walker, and he's in striking distance if he can keep it up. Let's move back over to Katrina's cut on the north end of Lake Pepin. Brian Bjorkman and Rich Zakowski had a big race for the best spot here this morning. Bjorkman got it, but Zakowski is confident he's on the fish as well. We're fishing a hole, and I know there's some big fish laying in this hole. Um, they're not going to, not every one of them is going to be real active. We get set up. We weren't there for more than five minutes and the rod started bending over on a willow cat. Set the hook, the barrel swivel broke in half. When you have a line come untied off of a hook, it's like kind of hard to take because I'm the only one that ties my lines. I tie good knots and maybe I guess it's a learning curve where I check my knots after every fish. Oh, and a tough break literally for Rich and a tough way to start the final day. But just a short cast across the cut is Ranger Pro Brian Bjorkman. And Rich Sikowski may have a front row seat for a big final day comeback. We're in pool four of the Mississippi River system, just outside of Red Wing, Minnesota. And this is a little hole called Katrina's Cut where Rick Zakowski, who started this final day He's in third, just broke off his line. first fish of the day. And right next to Rich is Brian Bjorkman, who won the race for the spot on the spot this morning. Yeah, there's a current scene that these fish seem to be, uh, they cycle through every so often, um, just heading out into the main, I guess, lake basin. And uh, we're just trying to intercept them here. Good one, Brian. A solid three and a half pound keeper. That's a great start for Bjorkman. This little spot is actually quite famous in FLW walleye tour history. In 
fact, the last time we were here back in 2007, BP Pro Jason Shakurit spent four days in Katrina's Cut and came out with his first FLW win, proving that sometimes waiting for the walleyes to come to you is better than trying to chase them. One of my favorite ways to catch big walleyes on the river is with a jig. Bring him to me, Jay. Yes! Not only is it my favorite, it's probably the most effective. Thank you, Lord. The size of the jig is key when catching big walleyes. I prefer a jig that's light enough to contact bottom, yet not heavy enough where you're dragging. Current is another factor that plays into the size of the jig you're using. If you're in a slack water area, I use a lighter jig, somewhere in an eighth to a quarter ounce. If I'm in the main river system, where the water is actually flowing heavy, I'll use 3 eighths to a half. Just make sure you keep in contact with the bottom. Buy a jig with the biggest hook possible. If you hook into an eight pound fish in a tree on a river system, you want to get them in the boat, you need a hook that is very strong. If you buy a light wire hook, it's probably going to straighten it out. Oh. When it comes to tipping my jigs, I love to use soft plastics. Something in a three or four inch minnow is my favorite. Let's talk a little bit about line. Mono versus braid. I prefer braid for one reason, sensitivity. Second reason, durability. If you hook up into a big fish in a tree on a river system, braid is gonna be much more forgiving. Stick with the braid. There we go. Using the right jig, in the right situation, to help you put more fish in the boat. Great stuff, thanks Jason. And remember folks, for all the latest tips and techniques from all of our FLW pros, just log on to flwoutdoors.com. And while you're there, make sure to visit fantasyfishing.com where you could become the next fantasy fishing millionaire. Back out to the action where today, it's Brian Bjorkman who's tied up to the perfect tree. I noticed the, this morning here is, I did, I'd get a bite, but they wouldn't hang on to it. They'd spit it out right away. And and uh, so I ended up trying to uh, set the hook a little bit faster without them actually t giving them time to actually eat it. A big kicker for Bjorkman, his second keeper of the day. The Ranger Pro might make another run today. Here's his neighbor, Rick Zakowski, still looking for his first and counting on a slow bite for his competitors on the lake. Uh, we got a major cold front, temperatures dropped to 30 degrees overnight. So it's, it's gonna be a little tougher bite today, I think. You just slide them back. Got them. And we were fortunate enough to catch about a 16 and three quarter inch fish, which I was shocked to see that size fish. And uh, let's get this live well turned on, keep that fish alive for weighing. Yes. Not the size Rich is used to seeing from this spot, but he's on the board finally with a lot of time left. And the leader, Ted Takasaki, has really been quiet so far, but maybe that's all about to change. There you go, Gary. The mighty Mississippi River on the Minnesota-Wisconsin border, a beautiful mix of towering bluffs, hardwoods, and water. And nestled in the heart of it all is beautiful Red Wing, Minnesota, an ideal tournament host and the site of many fantastic FLW walleye tour finishes over the years. We're working on another one here today. Let's get back out to our day three leader, Ted Takasaki, who's sticking with the trolling bite on Lake Pepin. I'm fishing the sharp edge of the river channel, and with the wind blowing against me as well as the current, I've got the, my Minn Kota Taroba with the autopilot feature and all I'm able to do is I put the trolling motor down, I've got my kicker motor working in conjunction with that 
and then I can keep the boat going straight. Now when I catch a fish, I don't have to worry about whether the boat's flying off to the left or to the right, which the wind and the current can do, and I can concentrate on fishing. It's like having a third guy in a boat. Well, we were trolling about eight to 10 feet of water along the edge of the channel break uh, with current coming along there, and probably trolling right around 1.6 to 1.7 mile an hour with lead core and deep diving crankbaits. That one looks like a better one. Yeah, it feels better. Yes. All right, that's a good start. A good, good start. You, bet. you bet, man. You know, I was really happy about that to have a, a keeper fish that, you know, was looking for anything over 19 inches. All right, that's the kind of fish we're looking for. We'll get five of them and then we're hog hunting. The day three leader is on the board and he has been by far the most consistent well, pro on the water all the week. On day one, the action was fast and furious all over the river. Rich Zakowski set away. the standard with an incredible 40 pound limit for the early lead. On day two, Zakowski stumbled, which opened the door for local pro Randy Stevens. 24 pounds and three ounces to it, put you right up in second place. On day three, Ted Takasaki made his move. While the rest of the leaders struggled, Takasaki boxed his best limit of the week, over 29 pounds, to move into the top spot heading into the final day. One of the things we sometimes take for granted with our fantastic field of professional anglers is safety. Anytime you're dealing with high horsepower boats and unpredictable conditions, you've got to be careful. And we had a bit of a scare on day three, a near tragedy that turned heroic, involving Ranger Pro Steve Vandemark and his co-angler, John Grayheck. We whipped into uh, fourth cut or, you know, fisherman's there and we started three weighing. Luckily, we both had our life jacket on. I heard him say fish. I had, a, I had a fish on the line, and as I was bringing it up, that was the last thing I remembered as I saw, the, saw it come to the surface. John just, he started buckling, and I'm like, you okay? And he just kept going down, and I yelled his name a few times, and next thing I know, boom, and he's in the water, gone. I sort of panicked, run to the back, waited for him to surface, and when he did, he was face down in the water. Then I dove in after the guy, and I was a ways away from him, so I had to swim to get him. When I got to him, uh, he was still face down and not breathing. What I wound up doing was squeezing him, and he started puking out water, and then he started breathing a little bit, so I'm like, okay, he's alive. We were kind of at that point, I didn't know what to do. I was floating and trying to make it to shore, and the current was sweeping us, and the boat was long gone. We heard a cry for help, and there was a boat approximately a quarter mile away and they reeled in their rods and reels and got in there real quick and helped drag Steve and the co-angler to shore. Steve told me that uh, after I got into the boat, and he had asked me if I was diabetic, and I told him no, that I, uh, what happened was I had an epileptic seizure. And, uh, he was okay, but we found out afterwards, you know, he has these seizures when he gets excited, and, and that's basically what it was. You know, if it wasn't for Steve Vandermark and the other boaters, I would not be here today. Had Steve Vandemark not moved so quickly, that person might have died. Steve Vandemark is definitely a hero. An incredible story with thankfully a happy ending. Let's get back out to the final day action. Here's Ted Takisaki, who has just one keeper in the box. Well, we'll hit, uh, hit another spot. I uh, had that little, little fish on here, but uh, Keep on moving, that's been the name of the game all week, just keep on moving. So I uh, picked up and headed down to an area called Long Point, which um, I've been catching a lot of real nice 20 inch saugers. It's a nice fish. Got him. Yes, nice fish. Whoa. Woo! <laughs> All right. Whoa. And uh, boy, about a 20, 21 inch sauger, a real fat one. Number two, three more like that. 
they're going to have a tough time catching me, I think. So the move down the lake pays off quick for Takasaki. Back in the river, Nick Johnson has three in the box. And I'm looking for bigger areas of slack water where there's a lot of you know fast water nearby. The fish are still kind of holding in that. It helps if it's related to some sort of mass shallow water. He gets a double. Hey, can we get a triple? Nope. Got a double, wall. We got like a double on. We had a, a white bass and a walleye at the same time. I mean, what yeah, you want? Lady. This one I want. There you go. Oh boy. It was a nice fish. You know, it was probably a 20 incher. Maybe not 18. But uh, again, just filler fish. You know, I'm just looking to get them five fish. Nick is just one fish shy of a limit, but he's still not satisfied with the size. But there are plenty of big fish out here, and we're going to see a few more before we're done. Good job. Welcome back, everyone, to the FLW Walleye Tour on the mighty Mississippi River in southeast Minnesota. I'm Jason Harper. We're about halfway through the final day, and here's how things stand. Ted Takasaki just put his second keeper in the live well and still holds a pretty decent lead. But river expert Nick Johnson is just one fish shy of a limit and is closing the gap. Rich Zakowski started the final day in third, but he's struggling a little bit today with just one small fish in the box. I pulled in here one day and then uh, about an hour I had uh, two 28s, a 24, and a, a 25. Good one. Don't horse him. I'm not. That was a good one. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably a good five, six pound fish. Go get another one. Come on, partner. There is no worse feeling for a tournament angler dumping a big fish at the boat on the final day. And that's two now for Zakowski today, but he still does have plenty of time. Let's jump back over to Nick Johnson, just one bite away from the first limit of the day but he's struggling to find a consistent bite. With that weather that moved in and the cold, um, it just, it's the way the river is and it'll do that. And it's not that the fish leave or they go anywhere, they just don't bite. And if they do bite, it's like they just don't put the effort into it. Quite, or is it? I don't know. You know, we, we, did, we stayed on that yeah. spot and the last fish to come was, was small. You know, it was, it was a little sogger, probably 15 and a half inches and he wasn't, he wasn't very big but it was my fifth capable fish. 15 and three quarter. I was thinking now, three big ones to go with it, throw out a few of them real small ones I got, and I'm gonna have a real nice weight. And it wouldn't be a surprise to anyone to see Nick come in with a big bag of fish because nobody has spent more time chasing walleyes here or won more money catching them than the man from Elmwood, Wisconsin, Nick Johnson. I started fishing when I was a kid, I grew up in uh, Elmwood, of course, there and right in town, and there was a little trout stream right in the backyard, and that's where I started fishing. Spent a lot of my time fishing there and uh, catching, catching a lot of trout. But the small trout in a tiny stream in Elmwood couldn't keep a young Nick Johnson's attention for long, especially when, at family gatherings, he heard stories of bigger water and much bigger fish. My cousins live in Bay City. They always fished walleyes, and I'd come down and admire some of the big fish they caught, and that's kind of what I kind of wanted to do. So when I was 16, I went and bought my first boat with a little 15 horse on it and uh, started fishing. From then on, Nick Johnson was quite literally hooked on the Mississippi River, learning every hole, hump, and backwater slough. A life's journey that culminated with a coronation of sorts as the top gun of walleye fishing and the king of the Mississippi when he won the 2004 FLW Walleye Tour Championship right here on his home water. But the river rat from Elmwood is going to have to draw on all that experience to catch this guy, Minkota Pro Ted Takasaki, still working his big fish spot on Lake Pepin. Oh, here's the fish. No, that's a little one. Oh, maybe he's, eh. He ain't no 20-incher. 
you know, I'm trying to decide whether to keep a 16-incher at that point and have three fish. Uh, I'd already thrown a 17 back, but it's getting a little bit later in the day, and I'm thinking, man, maybe I should keep that 16-incher and just about ready to put it in a box when the rod goes back. Fish? Oh, nice one, too. And I could see he was coming to the surface, and I've got a real long net, a real long handle net. I was reaching way back there, uh, had the net underneath the fish, but all of a sudden he flopped. Oh, get him a little closer, Gary. Got him. Yes. Oh, nice fish. Oh, that's a bonus, man. Oh, woo! Yes. Yes! Uh! It was at least a 24 inch walleye, which is one of the first and biggest fish that I've caught in that area all three days, four days of the tournament. Look at that one, man. Four, five of these, and I'm in. <laughs> I guess the, at that point I had three good ones. The 16 incher actually went back <laughs> since it didn't go into the live well. Timing is everything, and Ted is getting tougher to catch every minute. Woo! Here's Brian Bjorkman with two big fish in the live well. I'm hoping that the, the lake turned off. I know it really went, went good yesterday, you know, for a lot of people, and hoping that thing shuts down today, and, and, and we can catch one more fish, and maybe we can climb up a little bit. He's hooked up with his third fish right now. Still tied up to that same tree in Katrina's cut. That's another solid keeper for Brian, making a quick move up the leaderboard. But his hope that the lake bite is off may not come true as we get back out to Ted Takasaki. So after the 24-inch fish, uh, I was really pumped up and thought, man, we're going to get a couple of 20s. and. I uh, spent about an hour and a half, maybe even two hours trolling that entire stretch uh, with not a whole lot. Uh, decided to make one more pass down and uh, on the way down, just as I was ready to pull up the rods, uh, board, the rod goes back. Caught about a 16 incher. Now that one is going to be the fourth fish, and I decided I wasn't going to lose this tournament by a pound, so decided to throw him in a box. <laughs> Had to keep him. You got to come in with five. That's the smart thing to do right now is come in with five for sure. Well, that one won't win any awards, but the leader is just one fish away from another limit. Still, this tournament is a long way from over. Back on the Mississippi River on the Minnesota-Wisconsin border with tournament leader Ted Takasaki. He's still one fish short of a final day limit and he's made a major location and presentation change. He's given up on the high speed crankbait trolling pattern and switched to a much slower live bait bottom bouncer presentation. A bottom bouncer is simply a unique weight system that holds a live bait rig just off the bottom while allowing the angler to keep constant contact with the structure. Ted is using a three foot snell with a small float just in front of half a night crawler, slowly drifting across the structure. Pull up on that point and start marking fish right away. So, I mean, at that point I thought, man, this is, this is looking good. Uh, kept trolling, drifting back and then trolled back forward again and boom. There's one, Gary. Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. You got him? Is he in there? Gary, where is he? Oh, <laughs> I'm hitting the camera, man. Yes, 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 yes. It had been 26, 27, 26, 27 inch fish. I mean, now I'm really pumped because now it, it gives me my five fish 
and I can sit on that big fish spot for the rest of the oh, you day. Want to keep this one? Man, he's been doing this all week long, and Takasaki is not going to let up here on the final day. Back into Katrina's cut and Brian Bjorkman, as seen here from fellow competitor Rich Sikowski's boat, which gives you kind of an idea of just how close these guys are. He's hooked up with his fourth fish right now. Good job, Brian. That's another big fish for Bjorkman. He may not be able to climb all the way to the top, but Bjorkman is going to make a big final day move. Back out on Lake Pepin and Ted Takasaki looking for upgrades. As we're drifting back, uh, Gary's ride uh, bends over. And... 14. Six. Oh, yeah. Yes! Thank you, partner. All right. That one was probably about a four pounder. Um, again, pulling bottom monsters and uh, uh, crawlers. Three. Well, I tell you what, right now, I mean, we got uh, five solid fish. Uh, smallest is almost three pounds. So, uh, with the biggest being six, I mean, I'm figuring probably got at least uh, 19, uh, 20, 20 pounds or so. So Nick better have a good day today. He's talking about Nick Johnson, who started the day in second place and also has a limit in the box. We're on a big fish spot. We're looking for big fish in this area. Had caught the big ones there. You know, that's where I had taken the 31 pounds the first day. So you, when you get a bite there, you just expect it to be a monster. Nick, take it easy with him. Of uh, course, Chad hooked up with it, and, and uh, he knew immediately what he had. He's got a walleye, a nice one. Oh, yes! yes. That a boy! Booyah! There's one. That was, it almost, you know, you could feel it's going to start to build now. We're going to get, we're going to get him, and we're going to get another one. Hey, them kind will help, huh? Nice. <laughs> Two more. Two more. So Johnson is trying to make a late charge, and he's got some time left. Quickly back to Ted Takasaki and his co-angler, Gary Spiker, who are trying to slam the door with time running out. Just about when I was ready to leave again, we were coming up from, on that, just on the point, and uh, Gary's rod bends back. I just threw the other rod down. I just threw the rod on the floor. Oh. Did it come uh, off? No. Just come came off? off. Just came off. And the fish Crap. just pops off and uh, just, you know, disappointed, but there's not a whole lot you can do. When uh, when a fish comes off, you didn't do anything wrong. And um, so it was just uh, luck of the draw there, but that would have been a real nice fish to really close the door on the tournament. So at the buzzer and what could have been an insurance fish for Ted Takasaki never even makes it to the boat. Still, this was another great final day shootout on Old Man River. He got me at the last second. Got him. Good job. Oh, nice fish. <laughs> They're loading up and heading for the Red Wing Walmart Supercenter. Who's going to take home our second FLW Walleye Tour title of 2009? We're about to find out. 21 pounds, 9 ounces to it gives you 74 pounds and 2 ounces. FLW Outdoors is brought to you by Ranger Boats. Still building legends one at a time. Evan Root E-Tech. With three years, no maintenance, spend more time on the water. Berkeley, catch more fish. Lawrence, the high definition revolution is here. Febreze, it's a breath of fresh air. And by Chevy, the official ride of FLW Outdoors. 
Welcome back to the 2009 Walmart FLW Walleye Tour on the Mississippi River in Red Wing, Minnesota. I'm Jason Harper. Our top 10 pros and co-anglers have done all they can on the water. Now it's up to the scale. I, I accomplished what I needed to, what I felt minimally I had to do. Uh, if somebody else uh, comes in with 30 pounds uh, or 40 pounds, then they certainly deserve to win the tournament. I'm feeling excited. It was a great day. Uh, did the best I could. Made some good decisions today, I believe, and uh, uh, whatever happens, happens. As always, a great crowd of walleye fans have gathered at the Walmart Supercenter where FLW Walleye Tour Tournament Director Sonny Reynolds gets things started with Ranger Pro Brian Bjorkman. Bjorkman was on fire the last two days with big fish after big fish from his small spot at Katrina's Cut. But was it enough to climb all the way to the top? You need 20 pounds and two ounces to take the lead. He's a smiling, nodding that head because we're going to add 21 pounds and nine ounces to it gives you 74 pounds and two ounces. Just one angler into the weigh-in and already a new leader as Bjorkman takes over the top spot. Scott Fairbairn is next, but comes up just short. Not gonna quite do it with- Lake Erie champ Pat Bile takes the next shot and bumps Bjorkman out of the hot seat by less than half a pound. Evan Rood pro Chris Gilman comes up short while local favorite Randy Stevens climbs to the stage with just three fish, but they are three good ones. But has he got 14 pounds and nine ounces worth? Is that gonna put you in the hot seat? It just might do it. Let's add 15.7 to it, gives you 75 pounds and nine ounces. Randy, you jumped into the lead. Another new leader moves into the hot seat as first Perry Good, Four pounds and two ounces. And then Barry Walker. Seven pounds and one ounce to that. And finally, Rich Zakowski come up short. Can I sit on that, Sonny? <laughs> Which leaves just two anglers left. Up next is veteran Ranger Pro and past FLW Walleye Tour champion, Nick Johnson. It was a tough final day for Nick with a limit of small fish early, but he found a big fish bite yes! late in the day. The question is, did he get enough of them? good solid box of fish behind by 10 7 let's add 13 pounds and nine ounces to it <laughs> we have a new leader with 78 pounds and 12 ounces so Johnson takes over the top spot and there's only one man left to challenge him our day three leader Ted Takasaki it was a near perfect final day for Ted. He gambled and threw back some small fish early and was rewarded with a couple of big bites late in the day. And a tournament limit. Total weight, 20 pounds, 11 ounces, 93 pounds, five ounces. There is no doubt you are looking at one of the hottest pros on the FLW Walleye Tour right now. Ted Takasaki follows a runner-up finish in the season opener back on Lake Erie with his very first FLW win right here on the Mississippi River. This is just a feeling just too, in, too incredible to imagine. Um, if I could bottle the emotions that I got right now and sell it, I'd be a millionaire. It's, uh, it's been a lot of hard work, uh, a lot of years of uh, getting really close and uh, not getting there, and uh, finally today it's uh, all, all made it worthwhile. A fantastic win for a tremendous veteran walleye pro. Congratulations, Ted. You certainly earned it. Also, congratulations to Ted's final day partner, Gary Spiker of Cedar Rapids, Iowa, our Mississippi River co-angler champion. With a second and a first, the Land of Lakes Four, Angler of the five. Year lead easily goes to Ted Takasaki. But Pat Bile, with a win and another top 10 finish this week, is hot on his heels. We've got two qualifiers left for these pros to work their way into the top 50 for an invitation to the $650,000 FLW Walleye Tour Championship at the end of the season. 
Remember, for all the details on this or any FLW Walleye Tour event, make sure to log on to FLWOutdoors.com. And while you're there, make sure to check out FantasyFishing.com, where you could become the next fantasy fishing millionaire. Old Man River comes through with another FLW Walleye Tour thriller. For our champion, Ted Takasaki, Sonny Reynolds, and the entire FLW Outdoors crew, I'm Jason Harper. We'll see you next time.